Hi students, and welcome to my brief discussion on determining the effects of errors on financial statements. Please read the related section in your textbook before watching this video, and then follow along on your student handout on page 6. Let's give it a go. When I have an inventory error, I like to analyze what the error did and then determine what the fix on the financial statement will be and then reason my way to them. So I would probably myself start with this once I knew what the problem was and then that would hold true that what was correct and what was incorrect could be understood. So given that, let me tell you that our error is we showed ending inventory at 16 when it should have been 20. So if we showed ending inventory on the balance sheet at 16 when it should have been 20, then we need to increase it by 4, as this shows. Now, given that I must be in balance, something else must be understated by 4 on the other side of the equation. And I'm going to tell you, I know in this example, that liabilities are okay. So the difference has to be in owner's equity. Why? Well, if assets are understated, then something in owner's equity was understated. And I know that the ending inventory directly affects cost of goods sold. So net income must need to be increased by 4 to make owner's equity bigger. And gross profit needs to be increased by 4 because net income needed to be increased by 4 and they traveled together. Both of these were caused because the cost of goods sold would have been too small. That's what my analysis tells me. Now let's check to see. I'm saying, first of all, that net income should have been $4 more. And you can see by my income statement that it should have been $4 more can also see that I think gross profit should have been four dollars more and in fact it should have been four dollars more. All of this was caused by cost of goods sold being too small. Was the cost of goods sold too small? Indeed it was because here's our correct numbers and here's our incorrect numbers. So you can analyze and understand what an error in inventory did and know what its effects had to be on the financial statements from just understanding that the balance sheet equation must be in balance. And then you can prove it by showing an incorrect and a correct income statement. Sometimes that's harder than just working from the analysis. Let's try an error in the opposite direction. Incorrectly, I showed ending inventory being $24. What it should have been in my example was 20. How does that affect my balance sheet? Well, first of all, my inventory was shown at 24 when it should have been shown at 20. So I can tell you that my assets are overstated and need to be brought down by $4. If this side of my equation needs to be brought down by $4, then something on this side needs to, too. And we're giving it as a given that liabilities are okay. So if one side's too big by $4, the other side needs to be brought down by $4. What would that be? Well, cost of goods sold and ending inventory directly affect net income, which directly affects owner's equity. So net income must have been too f $4 too small, and gross profit must have been $4 too small to cause this error. And this would have all been caused by cost of, gold si cost of goods sold being too high. So I've pretty much, without looking at the income statements at all, determined what errors I'm looking for. Now I could answer a multiple choice question 
quite easily. Let's see if my an if my analysis holds true. Now the reason I said I can answer a multiple choice question quite easily is I've already listed what I think the possible consequences are and these are where the questions are likely to be. So instead of reasoning my way through its answer, I look for the answer that's right. Let's see if it worked. Is net income four dollars too high? On the incorrect one it says thirty four. On the correct one it says thirty, so that's true. Gross profit? Also true. Overstated by four dollars needs to come down. Cost of goods sold. I have it at fifty six and I'm saying that it should have been higher at sixty. And that also panned out. So without ever even looking at financial statements by saying this number needs to come down by four, I know that this number needs to come down by four. And that means that net income needs to come down by four, and that gross profit was too high by four, and the cost of goods sold was the culprit. It would have been too high by four. So I like to look for the effect of errors that inventory mistake had from the balance sheet equation perspective and then I'll extend that if I need to to financial statements but it's much easier for me to say well let's think about this if this is too big then this is too big and if that's too big net income was too big because net income was closed in it and what would make Net income being too big is cost of goods sold being too small. That's what's happened if it's overstated. And I can do that again if it's understated. Look how easily that happens. If assets are too small, then I know stockholders' equity is too small. Why would that be? Because net income was too small. Why would net income be too small? Well, cost of goods sold must have been too big. So I can reason my ray just from simple balance sheet equations to what actually happened on the financial statements and be correct without getting myself confused or buried in the details as sometimes writing the whole thing out can cause. Thanks for joining me for this sh short reflection on the effects of errors on financial statements. And remember, it can be extended to any kind of error. If you can say what's wrong on the balance sheet, then the income statement just has to make sense with regards to that. All right then, thanks for joining me.